unlearning the blame game. This podcast today, we're going to be talking about the blame game. And it's quite complex, really, because what we have been taught and hear a lot of is stop blaming the world and take responsibility and accountability. And we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the value of that. But then we're going to talk about when that thought process is taken to the extreme, the damage that it can do. Now, let's start with taking responsibility and accountability. I remember a friend of mine saying, look, Chengi, even if I had a million people to blame, it happened. So what now? And I remember her saying to me, this is having someone to blame doesn't actually bring me comfort. Isn't that interesting? For the first time in my life, I actually felt like that makes sense for all the people that I had to blame for the way that my life was unfolding, for all of the people that I could hold you know, accountable for the pain that I'd endured through my life. I still didn't feel any better about myself or the situation. I wasn't better. So I went on a journey to basically reprieve everybody from everything that they had done and take complete and absolute responsibility for my life. Instead of accusing my parents for what they did not expose me to, what they did not give me, what they, how they did not love me, I decided that I would be responsible for who I was. That led me on a fantastic journey. I became obsessed with personal development. I worked on myself. I worked so hard. And I owe that conversation a lot because it was my maturing when we no longer feel that we by blaming we are somehow moving forward when really we're stuck we're stuck at the place of blame because the people that we're blaming have moved on or they have people to blame too where do we go from that place as i grew i became more stable financially more stable as a parent more stable as a woman and as a friend and i began to regulate myself so much better because now i didn't have to manage the rage i didn't have to manage the resentment i didn't have to manage the what could have should have been if that had not happened it was freeing it was wonderful it was great But it was not healing because it was only half of the job. Firstly, I forgot the piece. The important piece was that was owning the reality that this did happen to you. This did happen to me. You know, I have clients who were molested as young girls at the age of 12, 10, 8, younger And they go to therapy and they're told to take responsibility for the promiscuity that they engaged in thereafter. Take responsibility for who and what you were doing. Stop blaming the world. Yes, it happened, but stop blaming the world. Stop blaming your parents and, you know, take responsibility and be accountable for the lifestyle that you've been living in the last three years and the last two years. Sounds good. And then by the time they come to work with me and I'm asking them, Who hurt you? Whose victim are you? Oh, I'm no one's victim. I'm just myself. But you're still here. You're here because you may have created a life from not blaming. You're successful. You are grown. You got it together. That's why you can even afford to be here with me. But you're here. You're right here still needing to work on your relationship. Still needing to figure out who you are or where you're going because not holding people and blaming people is half of the pie. But having somebody to say that person, there's a reason we have a law system where people actually have to pay for their crimes. It's because psychologically we must feel that people pay for their crimes. That sometimes there is no healing unless we can see that people pay for their crimes. But many of us are going to have to live our whole life knowing that the person that hurt us, stole from us, duped us, abused us, molested us, has never and will never see the prison cells. And we have to trust that God and all the universe will make sure they get their comeuppance. But we cannot not hold them accountable for what they did. We have to say, yes, that happened to me. It did. And it wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault that my father beat the hell out of me for as long as I can remember. It wasn't my fault that at the age of eight, somebody came into my life and changed my trajectory and changed and marred me and made me have to be this person who responded to life the way I do. 
it's not my fault that at 15 or 10 i was abandoned by somebody who should have taken care of me that person mom dad sister uncle friend they let me down it's okay to say that because when we're able to say that then we can take the journey of healing because when we don't say that when we ignore that it happened when we don't face it when we don't connect why our lives are so broken to that person we cannot start the most powerful part of the healing journey we have to live in cognitive dissonance where we are denying and disowning the reality that somebody else perpetrated so what is the next step when you say you whether that person is in front of you or not and you can name it and say mom dad brother sister auntie teacher you broke me you hurt me you damaged me you did that that's on you that was your pain that was your brokenness that was your trauma that you put on me it's not my trauma it is not my pain we can actually begin to own what happened and just own the pain the trauma that we're trying to pass down we don't have to be a bad person we don't have to incubate and take in their trauma and that's what we normally do we take on their rage we take on their pain and we can say that was your bag that was your coat not mine that was your brokenness not mine you did that to me but I give back to you that which is broken. I, 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 I renounce it. I don't have to be perverted. I don't have to be broken. I don't have to be regulating and self-soothing by betraying myself all the time. You betrayed yourself. You wanted to self-soothe in a way that was dysfunctional. You wanted to self-soothe in a way that was perverted. You wanted to do that, but I don't have to be that. Because what we don't realize is a lot of trauma that we experience, we tend to repeat it. We tend to do it to others because we start to feel that we're worthy of it and in a way it becomes a cycle of abuse the little children that are molested become molesters the little children that were beaten fight because they take on the nature of the predator and it's okay to say hey you did this it hurt me it harmed me yes you did it but i don't need to inherit your nature either i don't need to to inherit that and then the second piece is and most important pieces, I can begin the journey to forgiveness. I can begin to say, look, I forgive you. And that is the most difficult. But unless if we're just denying that somebody hurt us, that we're somebody's victim, then we have no one to forgive. So what we have is part of a process that we so need missing. The process of disowning the nature of the person, the process of forgiving that person, the pain and what it will take and what needs to come up in us and the, the, the sadness that needs to be addressed and the hurt that needs to be addressed and the pain that needs to be addressed. We don't get to deal with it if all we do is just, well, stop pointing the finger and be accountable. Sounds good. Sounds good and is good. But what we end up creating a successful lives on the outside and empty lives on the inside. Blaming is a different thing from holding others accountable, forgiving them and then holding ourselves accountable to our healing. Because healing is ultimately what we're after. Healing is the bedrock of everything that will bring us joy. Because when we are unhealed, we cannot connect. And if we cannot connect, we cannot experience life. Because life is experienced through connection. Joy is experienced through connection. Connecting to our careers, connecting to God, connecting to family, connecting to friends. When that connection is strong and that connection is powerful, we are fed. But when we refuse to bring things up to the surface and we refuse to heal because it's so much better to let everybody off the hook and not have to deal with the ugly stuff, we are becoming blamers. And here's the thing about being a blamer. I don't want to change. I don't want to grow. I don't want to heal. I just want to stay angry and validate why I have become this person who can never move on. 
and validate getting older and angrier. I want to stay angry. The blame game is really the game that is played by people who are not ready to heal. Because once I take on the journey and I say, hey, you are to blame. I don't want your nature. I'm going to go on a journey to forgive you. I'm going to start rebuilding myself. I'm no longer part of the game. I leave the game. But as long as I continue to go round and round, you are to blame. You're to blame why I'm this way. You're to blame. But we don't take it the next few steps. We become victims of the very thing that was sent emotionally to us to help us know and begin the process of healing. If we want to know why we are sick or ill, we go and get a diagnosis. We figure out how we got it in the first place. We stop having those habits to heal a symptom. You got to know the cause. And sometimes in our attempts to be so elevated, we're stuffing and repressing some of some ugly things that we need to look at. And I had a client who struggled and continues to struggle because the idea of holding her perpetrators accountable for what they did felt like she was moving backwards. And until she was ready to face the perpetrator in the eye emotionally, she was never going to get the breakthrough. And this comes up in my practice a lot. Women who refuse because many of them have done personal development and they've been told, stop blaming the world and take responsibility. And I agree with that. I am not part of the victim culture, but I do believe that there are people that are victims. And no amount of don't say it takes it away. What we need to do is look at the ugly truth. We've got to look at the thing we're avoiding. Got to name it. Figure out what we're going to do from there and how we're going to move forward. Somewhere between having someone to blame and, and having being part of the blame culture, somewhere in between there is life. Life more abundantly is freedom because life without freedom is not life. We have to be okay to take the journey and not just take strong positions. I have no one to blame. I'm the reason everything happened and or everybody's to blame and everybody's the reason it happened. Those are lazy positions to take because it's easier to label a thing and never have to deal with it. Never have to open that can of worms and hey, take it from me. Opening the can of worms gets tiring, exhausting, painful. But it is absolutely necessary for wholeness. I want to invite you to take that journey today. Some of us don't even want to blame our family and friends, our mom and dad, because we love them so much. And that's good. But at some point, we've got to call it what it is so we can heal it. Sometimes we're trying to protect what should just be healed, not revealed to the world or exposed just needs to be healed and you can't heal that mother wound you can't heal that father wound until you look at it until you call it what it is and nothing more we've got to be willing to look at the ugly if we're ever going to unlearn the toxic blame culture and become gods and become conscious and awake and aware i hope that this podcast has helped somebody because i am excited that i was able to do it i'll see you on our next podcast but in the meantime, do take care of you. Bye-bye.